Hi, this is Dr. Parikh, and this video is about doing a title page. If this is your first time watching a video, if you just kind of skipped all the pre-stuff and jumped right in, uh, I try to walk you through, I try to show you Blackboard. It's not completely finished because I haven't made the videos to upload. Uh, I show you the templates. They are works in progress though, so they are as good as I know how to make them today, but by the time you watch this, they might be a little bit different because I might have found a way to make them better. Uh, I also try to include my face, not because I love the screen grabs that YouTube does, but because I think it helps make a little more of a personal connection. I highly recommend that you slow down or speed up the videos as you need to. Uh, there's settings where you can adjust the playback speed. I'll try not to talk too, too quickly, um, but it's really up to you what speed you watch it at. I also highly recommend that you actually do the assignment while watching the video. So you may want to watch it through once and then try it. Or you may just want to open up the assignment now, and if you have to watch it through a couple times to get it while you fill it out, that's fine. Uh, today's assignment is nice and quick, so it's a good one to get started with, which is why I start with it. Uh, I also apologize, my office is somewhere near sweltering, and so my face is extremely red right now. Uh, again, I don't do video because I love the way I look in these videos, but because I think it's one of the ways that, especially for my online-only students, but even for my in-person students, uh, it helps feel a little bit more like the best parts of the classroom I'll put together. I'm in my office today, so if you, you know, if you haven't stopped by yet, again, you, it's this sense of inviting you into my space, uh, and you are welcome to stop by. Uh, so I'm here on the home page. There's always multiple ways to get to assignments, and I think sometimes students get a little confused by that because, uh, they're then not sure where things are because it kind of seems to be in different places different times. Um, the one way is the weekly modules so we'll show that so we're in unit one and then you come down the videos will be here under readings and resources uh, but the actual assignments will be under learning activities. So you could click on learning activities these aren't the full assignment descriptions but they have links to all of the assignments and so this is everything that's due in uh, this module. Again, if you're watching this much after summer 2019, these may change a little bit. Your Blackboard may look a little different. If you are my in-person class, your Blackboard probably is going to look a little different. Um, but you can click on title page and it'll take you right to the assignment. Uh, I'll show you another way to get there is here you see literature review and research proposal. Let me click so you'll see where it shows up on the screen, literature review. This lists all the pieces of the first a big assignment, the literature review paper. And then the second big assignment, which builds on that, is the research proposal paper. Uh, so it has all of the research proposal assignments. And you'll notice this looks different than the links over here under the unit. The unit just sort of lists the name, and you can see this little link, hyperlink, showing that it's uh, linking to the real assignment. The assignment actually lives here under literature review. And so you can see the full description for it here. Um, there's a link that right now goes to just kind of the generic playlist. I may leave it that way or I may link it directly to this video later. Um, and then there's also a link that goes right to the paper template. You have to kind of click out to get to the external. Um, I tr again, I try to link things a lot. So you may, again, it may feel like things are kind of going in a circle, um, but it's really just that there's multiple ways to get there. If you're feeling lost, just spend 10, 20 minutes poking around and try to figure out how things are laid out. Um, as a reminder, I am happy to have you work. Again, this is summer 2019. Policies might change over time, so I won't discuss them in every video, but since this is the first assignment video, um, I'm happy to have you actually, you can, uh, You can, this is all within my, uh, in my account, but you can make a copy of this to your account, um, and then you can share it with me, and if you, when you submit, if you just share it with me, it's going to get lost in the shuffle, but if you include a link to your Google Doc, if I want to make a comment, I'll go into the Google Doc, because Blackboard's comment system is not great. Google Doc has much better comments. Uh, but you can't, if you just submit a link, you're not going to get graded. 
uh, you need to submit either a Word doc or a PDF. And that's easy to do. You just do download as, you can choose Microsoft Word or PDF. I recommend PDF just because that way, even if you your computer doesn't have Microsoft Word, you'll see exactly how the formatting looks. Sometimes when you switch from a doc to a, from a Google doc to a Microsoft doc, you get little changes in formatting that screw things up, especially with some of the APA style rules. Um, so I recommend if you're exporting or downloading to do it as a PDF. Uh, and when you upload your file, always make sure that it shows up in the pane. I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Um, so let's just read through the description together. I don't know that I'll do this for every assignment, but again, I really want to model, walk you through how to do this. So you're going to really, the key here is what you're doing is you're showing me that you can work with APA style and you're showing me uh, that you have an idea for a paper. This doesn't have to be the topic you stick with. Let me say that again. This is not you signing in blood that you're going to do this topic. This is you telling me this is my starting place. This is what I'm going to start searching when I go in to find my articles. Um, so it's very tentative and even if you stick with the same topic, you're going to update your title because right now your title is going to be very generic. Um, but I want you to get just some practice and I want you to dip your toe in. I'm big on baby steps building up so that no step feels like a big leap. Um, and then you'll include a running head, which is a shortened version of your title. Um, here you'll notice the template for the title page is actually just the template for the whole paper. And what I recommend is that you just write each of your sections right here in the paper because every time you copy and paste, you risk screwing up the formatting. So I like students to just keep everything together. When we get to the research proposal, that doesn't quite work anymore because you're still working on this literature review document while also writing the new sections that go in uh, to the research proposal. So you do have to copy and paste there, but I at least like to limit it. Uh, so you don't delete everything else, just leave one running document and every time I go into grade, I'll look at the section that you're submitting for. Um, I've already talked about how you get graded uh, and if you don't submit anything, I can't figure out, as far as I know, there is no way. I could go in and type in points, but I can't use the rubrics and the rubrics are key to how I grade this course because it's the way I give you feedback about where your mistakes lie. If I were to go through and mark every teeny tiny mistake on every paper by hand, it would just not be manageable. I couldn't teach this class. I certainly couldn't teach more than one section of it. And I love teaching this class, so I try to make the grading work in a way that's manageable, but still gives you really detailed feedback. Um, I think everything else I've talked about. So. You can follow the link to the template here. Also, if you go into the folder that I share with the APA paper templates, it's the one that says 2A literature review paper. So again, there's always multiple ways to get to the same resource. Let's come over. Uh, so here I have my name as a uh, generic fill-in, but I will rewrite it just so you can see how that happens. We're all at Caldwell University. So if you were at a different institution, you would put that instead but we're at Caldwell, so you can just leave it there. If you go somewhere else for your master's or PhD and are still using this template, make sure you update it. And then a title of your paper in title case. Uh, and so I'm going to say Memorial Tattoos as meaning making process in grief. Uh, so if I were to start off with a brand new research focus, one of the ones that I would be likely to pick right now is memorial tattoos, people who get tattoos in memory of loved ones who have died. So again, this is not saying I'm definitely going to do this as my topic, but it's saying this is where I want to start. Other ideas that I have include uh, board games as a help for social anxiety or other isolated individuals. Um, I think in particular role-playing games with uh, people with social anxiety or on the autistic spectrum, something like that uh, would be interesting to do. I am also interested in career issues and how having a, a work spouse, uh, a best friend at work, leave the company where you work, 
how that changes your experience at the co company, your commitment, things like that, because uh, I think it's a real loss. So here I chose Memorial Tattoos. Now you don't have to tell me what your backups are unless you have a genuine question. If you're really not sure if your topic's appropriate, you could, honestly, in that case, just email me because you need my attention quick on that to give you feedback for later steps. Uh, just make a short, clear, polite email uh, if you're not sure a topic is okay. Um, I'll do a little talk about topics. So in psychology, we are very broad. You can choose a lot of things that fit, but make sure that your approach focuses on the psychology piece of it. For example, uh, I have type two diabetes. And so I might do a paper looking at how uh, lifestyle changes and diet help uh, people with type two diabetes. Now, I'm probably not gonna focus on the biological side of how diet affects things. I'm not gonna get into how these cells process glucose differently. Um, now I might look at how stress affects the body processes because that gets into biopsychology, how stress hormones change the way that the body produces glucose. Now we're back into psychology turf. I might also look at ways to help motivate uh, using, for example, motivational interviewing, um, gamification, so creating little incentives and prizes and point structures for following the rules of, uh, rules is a terrible word for it, but for just incentives for behaviors that promote health. Um, that would be, again, getting back into psychology. So you can take all sorts of things and present them from a psychology perspective. Uh, and for this class, the field is wide open, which is one of the things I love, is that I get such a wide variety uh, of topics. I keep saying tentative. One of the biggest issues is you need to go with what is out there as far as articles. So if you can't find an article on it, you can't do it. And you need at least four good articles on the topic uh, altogether. So when you're doing, when you're searching, uh, if, you're, if you can't find what you're looking for, you can always ask me for help. The librarians, man, they are ninjas at this stuff. So that really should be your first stop. I mean, I'm happy to help you, but they are honestly better at this step than I am. Um, another thought about topics is to be careful when you choose something that you're passionate about. What can happen sometimes is that students choose a topic that they either have a lot of experience with, so they know a lot about, or at least they think they know a lot about, uh, or they choose something they care a whole lot about. So there's two problems. One problem is in your paper, you want to write things that you already know. And they may be factual, but this paper needs to rely on citations for every claim you make. And so even if you know it, if it's not something, if you can't find a scholarly resource for it, you can't use it in your paper. So if it's something you have a lot of knowledge about, it may be difficult to write the paper in a scholarly way. If it's something you have a lot of experience with, you might also experience a lot of emotions as you write about the topic. Uh, and this is something to be aware of as you peer review too. You might agree to peer review with someone and then see their topic and realize that it's something too close to home. So make sure if you choose something that's similar to your own experiences, make sure that there's a little bit of distance so that you are able to, um, to kind of separate from your work a little bit and have a plan if you know that an article that you're reading or a section that you're writing about is going to be a little intense for you. Have a plan for what you're going to do afterward to get your mind off of it, whether it's going for a walk or hanging out with friends, uh, some sort of self-care or distractor activity. Uh, it may be something you do right before you have another planned, you know, going out for, to a movie with friends or something. Um, the last thing is, if it's something that's very controversial, most controversial, controversial things are controversial because there's good evidence to support both sides. And so when you look for sources, be aware that some sources might be supporting the view that's opposite of yours. And almost every controversial topic, you can find scholarly sources to argue either way. Um, and whatever you choose, you need to go with what the articles say, uh, not with the opinion you started with. So if you have a very strong opinion, it may be difficult for you to follow where the sources lead you. It may be something that contradicts what you thought, or it might just be something that's not quite the point you had hoped to make. It's just not there. So think about all of those things as you're deciding on your topic. 
got a little distracted there. So we've got our title, Memorial Tattoos is Meaning Making Process in Grief. And I might make, uh, so the short title should be, I think it's like 50 characters-ish. Uh, and it should be, capture the main idea. So Memorial Tattoos, and that's good enough. I'm always unsure if I spelled tattoos correctly. Yep, I did. And that is your title page. So now let's download as a PDF. And let me see if I can enter, I should have entered the student preview earlier, sorry. Uh, and I'll show you how you upload assignments if you're not familiar. You go into the assignment. You can always view the rubric so you can see how I'm going to grade you. And this, you know, you may notice you get uh, half, oh, that's a mistake. Um, but you typically get half credit. So if your name, it's worth one point. If you leave your name off, you still get half a point. Um, so I'm very generous with the percentages here. Uh, this one is just a mistake that hopefully I'll remember to fix when I'm done with this video. But you can always see exactly what's getting graded. And my goal is to make these specific enough that you know what's wrong just based on this rubric. So always check your rubric. Even if it looks like you only got you know a, a few points or a fraction of a point off, that's because I'm really generous in the early assignments. I don't want to hurt your grade for mistakes early on, but those mistakes are going to keep counting against you in later assignments. So always look at the feedback, even if it looks like you did really well on the assignment. So I come down, uh, I'm going to, let me see, did I, let's browse my computer. Let me look at downloads. That's probably where it went. Yep. So make sure that you know where your files are going when you download them. Uh, and actually, I really should have put my name in there just in case, but that'll be fine. So now you can see it took me to the submission page and it loaded it. So if you, so I should be able to see and I can check my formatting to make sure everything looks okay. And it does all look good. The font is all right. The spacing is all right. Uh, and I can hit okay. If I notice I've made a mistake, I can hit start new. All of these assignments, you can submit multiple ones if it's before it's graded. After I've graded it, so once I've given you feedback, occasionally I will specifically say you can submit a new one if you want. That's usually for really early assignments if I want to make sure that you understand what you're doing. Most of the time, though, it's one and done because there's a lot of assignments. I've got a lot of students. I just don't have the time to regrade assignments until they're right. Um, the way that that works, I give you feedback on what to fix so that you do it right for the next assignment. Uh, because later on, you're going to submit things with the same title page. And if you make the fixes that I told you, you'll get full points on those later assignments. Um, so again, just for my own sanity and time management, I typically don't regrade things, but if you notice that you made a mistake before I've graded it, submit as many as you want. Uh, when I'm grading, sometimes I'll zero out all those early submissions first, so it's a little panicky. It looks like you got a zero for the assignment, but it's just that I haven't graded your last attempt yet because it makes it a lot easier for me to see how much work I have to do and balance my time when I know how many things actually need to be graded instead of seeing, well, you know, there's two assignments two submissions for this, three for that. So even though there's five things, there's really just two things. It just gets overwhelming for me. That is the title page. That's a lot of detail. The rest of my videos will mostly just focus on how to do the assignment at hand. If you have any questions, you can email me. You can also go to the YouTube video and make comments there because if you have a question, there's a good chance that other people do too. And if you ask your question there, I can answer it there uh, and people can see. Obviously, if you're asking a really personal or specific question, you can still just email me. I'm Dr. Parikh. Thanks for watching. Bye.